Hi students, in today's lecture we are covering the attacking principles. Today we will cover dispersal, also known as WITS. We will talk about penetration and mobility, and also we will check on support and creativity. Let's begin! The first principle we are talking about today is dispersal, also known as WITS. Ever since you were little, the coaches asked you to make the field big when you're on the attack. So really, uh, we do this to drag the opponents out of their defensive shape and find little gaps that we can explore. For the purpose of the demonstration, we will be the team in blue and we are in possession of the ball. If we come against the team that defends in a very compact fashion, the idea of width is playing the ball from side to side, changing the angle of attack, meaning that in this case we are attacking from this side going that way. If we play the ball, the angle of attack will be here. If we play it even wider, the angle of attack will be there. Usually in response to this, the defensive shape will shift from one side to another. And as the ball is moved around, you are looking for that one player who is not really moving with their teammates and he or she is left behind so that a bit of space is created and maybe you can exploit it with a quick pass into space and if this defender is asleep you can have a goal at the goal. Our second principle that we will touch on today is called penetration. Penetration is nothing more than just simply breaking the lines. For the purpose of this we are still the team wearing blue and we are looking to penetrate through a defensive shape by playing the ball across the defensive line and maybe across another line to have an opportunity at goal. The counter to this will be a defensive principle which is called uh, depth. That means that instead of all being in one line that one penetration pass breaks all of us. If we are defending as one line and you can have one pass into space that the, the, the attacker will go with breaking one line. Usually, defensive teams will present multiple lines. In the simplest way, when we're playing a 4v4, it could be two or three lines, depending on how you count this. So penetration is really finding the gaps. A key in penetration is not on what the player with the ball does, it's what his or her teammates do. So, in fact, creating the gaps is all about movements of the players off the ball if they're able to drag the defender with them that creates these gaps and spaces that the player with the ball can exploit and play. We usually think about this as playing through the channels. Depending on your age, whether you are U9s or U16s, the coach can divide the field into three to five channels and they are asking you to play through a channel. That means that if there is a gap that you see, you play a gap in between the two defenders. Our third attacking principle that we are talking about today is called mobility. It is very critical to attack to have your whole team mobile, interchanging positions, trying to confuse the defenders and maybe create either the channels for penetration passes or drag them out of uh, defensive shape to create running opportunities for your teammates. The simplest way of thinking about uh, mobility is when you have an offensive restart from a throw-in, for example, you all know that if you just stand in the same spots for defenders it's super easy to get close to you or in front of you and there is no way you are getting the ball off of the throw in. So when you are being young footballers the coaches usually ask you to move around left and right so this way you have better chances of receiving the uh, ball from a throw in but the same thing applies for the pass. Now one way of thinking about this if you are being defended from behind and you move left and right Yes, that's effective, but to a specific degree. So the way I like to think about this is you are presenting the challenge to a defender. If the defender can see you and the ball at the same time, you're not moving enough. So see if you can get into spaces where the defender needs to turn his or her head to see you and the ball at the same time. So if this blue player goes behind the defender and the defender looks this way momentarily, as soon as the defender looks back, this player can move and receive the ball on the throw-in from here, thus using the mobility 
as uh, an attacking principle for the restart. Also, when your team is in possession of the ball, it doesn't have to be a restart. Especially if you are an older team, you can use mobility to create offensive opportunities by interchanging positions. For example, if this uh, attacking midfielder goes all the way to the wing and this defensive midfielder follows her, and in fact the swinger drops to the center, you can quickly play the ball in, and here you have two players defending one player, if uh, this, uh, this could be a center back, if the center back didn't follow. So usually it's a very good idea to use your team's strengths if you know different positions that you can play and you can substitute for each other, interchanging positions. That kind of uh, plays a little bit into our fifth attacking principles that we will uh, talk about today called creativity. So I'll show you how we can use that uh, to create goal scoring opportunities. Our fourth attacking principle we will discuss today is called support. So this diagram sort of tells the whole story. If you are the only attacker with the ball that goes against the whole team in defensive shape, you are very unlikely to be successful. So usually you try to bring some friends with you and you use the first three principles we spoke of, the wins, mobility and penetration to get you the high chances. So when you are the player not on the ball in attack, you are the supporting player. Supporting does not mean you cheerlead for your teammate, yelling, go teammate, have a, good, have a good run, maybe you can score. This is your movement to create effective opportunities for your teammate to score. Maybe that's creating a channel to pass through, maybe creating a little gap to run through, but you have to move around trying to drag the defender with you. So usually if you're playing a striker in this formation and your midfielder has the ball, you're not waiting in the middle uh, for, for this opportunity. You're trying to shift to the side, so this defender has to go with you, create a good 1v1 situation here if your midfielder is able to play through. And now he or she has an opportunity on goal. Or maybe this defender will drop back and you create a wall pass and have an opportunity from that. Our last principle that we are discussing today is called creativity. So creativity is something that is very, very difficult to coach. So if you look at this diagram, maybe this is Messi, who is able to run circles around three defenders and still come out on top of this. Uh, maybe it's a Ronaldo if you're a fan, using superior agility and speed and kind of good footwork to get by people into space. Or maybe it's just you playing at uh, your U9, U, U12, U15, whatever the case may be level and you are trying to come up with some, uh, some skill moves. One thing that I can definitely tell that I hope your coaches agree with me on this one, especially in trainings, try new things. Try the new skill moves and see if you can, if you can be creative. One thing about creativity that you cannot really teach it, but you can learn it and you can practice it. By doing the same skill move 20, 30 times and being unsuccessful in training, when it comes to a game, it will be easier, and if you really work on these things, you're very likely to be successful. So this is, in a way, kind of praising the individual skill. That's what makes the game really exciting and really important. But there is also another type of creativity that I would like to touch on. This is the team, uh, team creativity. So usually, usually, when you talk about attacking principles, you know what they are at this point. This is the last one, the wins, the mobility, all the good things, you will think that if we need to provide space, we have to make the field big. That means that we should not be close together with the ball like this. We should be far apart. But think of it this way. Creativity is really all about breaking the rules, including the rule of wits. Uh, can you create creativity? Like create creativity. Can you create a goal scoring opportunity by using creativity to move towards your teammate with the ball. I can think of one such scenario. We will look at these two players. One has the ball, the other one doesn't. She's in a good supporting position, maybe creating an outlet pass, and there are two defenders that are man marking. So usually if this ball... So this is the pressing uh, defender, this is a supporting defender. If the ball moves across, this defender becomes the pressing defender, this one drops in support. And they all know who they are responsible for. But how about instead of passing the ball, you will move with the ball towards your teammate. 
and the team will move towards you, that will create an opportunity for the defenders to come together because they're man marking both of you. So at some point, you can keep going and play the pass back to your teammate, and if your defender that is supposed to track you goes with you, that creates this whole channel. So in a way, if you are able to align two defenders together like so, before when they were wide, they were both covering this amount of space, but when they are together, they are only covering this space and they overlap the space that they cover essentially, and that means creating spaces on the left and right if you move together and then quickly separate into new positions. So here you've seen an example where as you crisscross each other, you sort of change positions. That means that you should be comfortable playing different positions. This is why when you are youngsters, we teach you to play different positions. We do not stick you into you know, a midfielder or defender role or an attacker role at the age of 8. We let you explore all the way through up until U16, U17 in some cases, so you can play the different positions and you can benefit from all of them. That pretty much uh, brings an end to our attacking principles. I hope this was fun. In our next lecture we will be talking about defensive principles and we will see how these attacking principles can be countered by employing the right uh, defending types and defending principles of play.